Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, let's keep working on the Partner Pioneer P42. Today's video, odds and ends, ignition, clutch, all that good stuff. Let's start putting this thing together. Let's see if we can cobble together an ignition for this thing. Stay tuned, this one's going to be fun. It'll either work or it won't. Okay, let's continue working on this thing. Uh, odds and ends, deferred maintenance, we'll call this one. Um... You guys know I took the oil pump off. This saw, funny story, unless it's broken down inside there, this saw had no oil line on it, like zero. So I'm going to have to make one. I'm going to make one out of some Echo fuel line. And this is the oil strainer right here. Okay. Um, I tried using a Husqvarna oil strainer and I couldn't get it to fit through the hole. I couldn't find a strainer that fits through this hole so um, I'm hoping I find the bottom. Um, this, this, oil, this oil tank is very tight and it, I'm not really sure. I'm just going to pause you guys here. I'm going to look at the length of the oil line from the saw I took this strainer off of. This is the oil line I took from the saw that I took this strainer off of. So how long is this? Built to there. So I'm just going to mark that with my hands. See if I can get it in there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Cut this off about where it was on the other saw. Okay. That should work. Lay this on its side. I'm going to reuse this gasket because it's mostly in one piece. Um, you guys remember when I took this apart, I was fighting getting this gasket off, but it should seal. I'm not super worried about it. Oil pump is right here. Just going to move you guys over so you can see. Oil pump. Push this line on as far as it'll go. I use this Echo Fuel line for everything. <laughs> I love this stuff. You can order it online. Um, there's two different sizes. Can't remember what size this is, but I use this a lot. Um, it's better than Tigon. I've, Tigon's okay, but it doesn't last as long. Where this this stuff, you you put it on and you forget about it, kind of thing. It doesn't. Uh, it seems to last forever. Okay, there's three screws that hold this on. In here. I'll use a scrunch because I tend to use those on everything. I don't know why. Well, I have a full toolbox full of tools. Okay. Wondering how the saw is going to run with the boost port in it. it. May be great and it may be horrible. We will find out. That's what we do here, right? We play with things. Out of the box, these saws are strong. Um, so when you have a vintage saw and it's already strong. And you kind of got to decide, okay, what am I going to do to it? And then you go from there. Which way does this thing go? Like this, I reckon. There we go. This saw is beautiful. Like the shape it's in. Absolutely incredible. Hey friends, you know what I didn't do? I didn't put the gear back on. <laughs> Hold on a second. If you can't laugh at yourself, then, you, well, you can't laugh at anybody else. I'm the king of laughing at myself. Whoops. We wouldn't have had any oil, would we? Let me grab that gear. Okay. Took that gear back on. Tap, tap, tap. And away you go. Okay. Let's <laughs> You know, if I had a nickel for every time I was had a problem with a saw and the problem ends up being me, <laughs> I'd be a rich man. Um, again, usually you put them together and it's fine. The difference is on YouTube... You could be filming, I, I've been filming this saw for months, which means it's been apart for months. Um, it's something you got to get used to when you're filming on YouTube is often you're going to have stuff apart for a lot longer than maybe you'd normally have it apart. So at least the way I do it, um, I like to go into detail. Long form content is definitely my shtick. 
Uh, don't get me wrong, I like a short here or there, but I find people, you guys out there, get more benefit from long form. At least that's what I hear. Um, so that's why I do long form. Um, okay, so we have an oil system. Maybe we should put the clutch on, shouldn't we? Here's the clutch. Earlier on me took it apart and put it all together with a zip tie. Because I knew it may be a while before we get this clutch back together. Okay. These are the coolest clutches I've seen. So this is a 3 8, eight pin. And we got a 7 pin. Should we throw the 8 pin on? Um, I tend to be more of a 7 pin guy. Um, this one's kind of, let's put a 7 pin back on there. We'll have enough chain speed with our port job. I don't think we're going to need more, but if we do, we have one. Okay, slide this on here. Need to put a little bit of grease on our wrist pin bearing. I'll just grab some grease. Wrist pin bearing, clutch bearing. There you go. <laughs> Always got lots of grease around here. The old skid steer, uh, she eats two things. Grease and, uh, heh, friends. I never noticed. This clutch is busted. Hold on. <laughs> I never even noticed that, even when I took it apart. Helps if you put these together properly. Hold on here. I'm not going to edit any of this out because well, I like to do things. I like to live in reality. Reality is my place. Um, that's just me. There. Okay. There we go. I was like, why isn't this clutch sliding over? Well, because of the Drum wasn't far enough down. These are nice. See that? This this clutch is actually um, keyed to the crankshaft, so it's not held on by a taper. Makes them really easy to get on and off. And we'll buzz that on a little bit better when we have more when we have more parts on the saw. Note to self, if you want to fire up saw, a little tightening the clutch. Okay, so there's your clutch side, all shiny and new. I do have brand new clutches. This saw may get one, but uh, for now, we'll just leave it like that. Well, we might as well start building an ignition for this saw. I just got to grab some parts for that. Okay, and being as I don't work on these all the time, I had this upside down and backwards. Okay, the rounded end goes out. Okay, and then this goes like this. Two screws, one here. Again, like I said in the ignition video I did, these saws are all pretty much the same. They're like home lights. Um, you know, your 922, your 925 home light, they're pretty much the same saw. But there, there is differences. So you just have to be aware of those differences if you're building one from parts. Okay, this goes here. Tighten that down. There we go, there's that. Now I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna force that into there. 
Okay, and we got these wires going this way. Okay, well, I'm guessing I should put my flywheel on. Uh, fuel line goes here. These have a two-piece fuel line. Pretty cool. Well, let's do a fuel line right now. Since we're, we're making good time. These things always need a fuel line. I've never, unless the saw comes to me running, I've never had one of these that didn't need a fuel line. Unless somebody's already replaced it. Let's see if I can break this off of here. And it's always Tygon. That's always the wrong size Tygon. This thing actually had a fuel line on it. That's pretty good. Did we break it off? Oh, we did not. Okay. Just going to grab me a length of hose. This will probably do. We'll use this. Okay, and first things first, let's get it on the end here. If we can. So hold on, friends. You, you slide it in through here. And not the easiest thing to do with a camera in front of you. Well, I ended up unscrewing the fitting because the Tyvek broke off the end. That's fine. Um, I try not to mess with these fittings because they may leak. Um, I'll put some, they're, they're an aluminum fitting. I'll put some uh, Teflon tape on it. Just grabbing a knife here. I'll put some Teflon on it and that'll usually seal it up. 99% of these things that I've ever dealt with though needs a fuel line. So this might be of some help to some of you guys. Okay, I'll just grab some Teflon. My roll of Teflon's inside, so I'll make a little note. But uh, to put some Teflon on here. Okay, new fuel line. Slide it over. Okay, and then I'll grab fuel filter. I'll use a Husqvarna. Okay, you just feed it through here. Okay, pull it through, put a Husqvarna fuel filter on here, slip that in, make sure it's going to hit the bottom and grab fuel out of there, okay, and then you just screw this on. And that's that. Okay, flywheel. Already have the key on there. We want to make sure that these these uh, wires are routed out of the way. Another nut. I'm not sure if this had a washer on it, but I believe it did. So I'll put that washer back over there. Grab my impact gun. Tight. And there's that. Other fuel line goes here. Okay. Um, we'll put a couple of AV mounts on. Let's throw these caps on. This cap's in rough shape. Oh, hopefully it doesn't leak. Oil cap. Couple of brand new AV mounts right here. And on the other side. My hands will thank me for this later. These old saws can vibrate quite violently. Okay, and let's finish this off with the ignition. Then uh, it's home free. We're almost done. Get a couple of bolts here. I'm not sure if I grabbed the right bolts. Maybe I didn't. 
Hold on a second here. Okay, I think I grabbed the right bolts. We shall soon find out. Let's screw this in here. I grabbed one of those NOS coils. If this, if this saw ends up being a runner, I'm gonna go further. I'll put a brand new clutch on it and just make it make it real nice instead of just fairly nice. Um, this saw is in ridiculously good shape, the paint and all that. I'd like to find a P42 chain brake for this. I don't have one of those that's in good shape. There's that. And now we have, sorry guys, I got you kind of turned around here. And now we have these two. I go like this, I'm guessing. And then there is a kill switch lead here. Okay, and I'll just space this out with some cardboard. Okay, and there's the finished ignition system. So again, you hook the two wires, there's a clip on there, hook both of them. Okay, and these two ground wires go here. Okay, two together. Then this wire goes to there, and then this goes up and around. There's a little spring tab right here. Okay, that holds the wire for the kill switch. Okay, so it goes up and around. Holds to here and then it comes up through the handle but uh, I think that's as far as we're gonna go today because uh, I'm gonna let this thing dry a bit more I just put the cylinder on this afternoon so there we go okay guys so there's the odds and ends of working on a Pioneer partner um, ignition fuel line all that kind of stuff and uh, these are the things you're gonna have to do if you buy a new saw I haven't tried the ignition yet. I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Um, I got to run. I got an errand. I got to go run with the family. But hopefully these parts work. I don't know if any of these parts are good. So hopefully they work, friends. That's all I'm going to say. I have no idea what we're dealing with. We'll dive into that in the next video. We'll try it right away. And if it doesn't work, well, then I'll start swapping uh, coils and and triggers and back and forth and we'll see but uh i think it should work friends everything on here is brand new anyhow thanks for watching take her easy and i'll see you in a couple days later